This is DJ Odini for Future of the Game TV with the interview with Steven Martinez. How's it going, man? Everything good. Everything going good, man. So you ready for this fight this week? Definitely. Been ready. <laughs> All right. How's training camp going? Um, training camp been going good. You know, been getting my running, my um sparring been good. You know, been dropping weight lately. You know, I haven't fought for ten months now, so you know. This, this is going to be like a little ring rust, but I've been working, you know, working to, to look good. Now, do you think that rust will be an issue or is something that you could work out during training? No, no, I, I, I'm adaptable, you know. I don't think it's, it's, it's going to be an issue. The fight, when the fight comes, you know, once that bell ring, you know, I got to do what, what I train and what, what I'm going in there for. All right. Now, I see you're fighting a guy by the name of Jeremiah Wiggins. How much do you know about this fighter? Um, he he's a slick fighter, you know. He he got a good hand hand speed, you know. Um, probably a little pop, but but um, uh, I say it's not even serious, you know. It, it's a fight that I should win, you know. It's not a fight that I should, you know. It should be a problem, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's not a stepping stone either, you know. It's a it's a fight that I should definitely win the fight. Okay, now um. When you get ready for your fights, do you watch film of your opponents or do you just focus more on your own training? Like, do you watch, like, uh, you know, it's like their previous um, fights? Um, I just, I've seen one clip, you know, and it was just that one time when they had mentioned just that one time we watched it. But that was, like, probably, like, a month ago. But after that, you know, um, I, we just, we set to a game plan and we that's what we're working. You know, we, we don't. I haven't, like, I'll probably look at it or another clip again, but I haven't, you know, I just seen one clip, one video, and I say I didn't go do more research about him and stuff like that. All right, I know that you trained with Marcos Suarez, and you used to train with Jose Bonilla. Um, how does that help you as a fighter to have a couple different trainers in your background, and how do they d defer on their styles of training? Um, well, Marcos Suarez, you know, I, I started with Marcos Suarez since I was young, you know. So we know each other very well, and um, with Bonilla, you know, um, it was it was a good experience to working out with Bonilla that one year that was last year. I learned a lot out there, you know, and and style wise, um, they they both um, they both smart trainers, you know, they both they know they both got differences, you know, a lot of differences because not all the trainers is the same, but they 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 they, they, they um they. They like the special, like the specialty, like the stuff that they work on. You know, no, they they big on on certain stuff. You know, but they are both good trainers. You know. All right, I see you got a pretty good record at thirteen and one with ten knockouts, and the one loss that you do have, a lot of people thought it could have been called either way, or that you might have actually won the fight. Um, how the motivational is it for you to, to start off with such a good record and the one loss you have? could have been called in your favor or either way. Um, that fight, um, you know, it was a close, it was a very close, I felt like I won, I know that I won the fight, but it was, it was really close. It wasn't like a, a walk through the park, you know, it was a close fight. Um, I didn't win it clearly, like, you know how it was, that, that's probably why it went the other way, but like I say again, um, that fight gave me a lot of motivation, you know, um, after, after I lost, I probably took like a one, two weeks off and then, you know, I went. I, I talked to my my old my old trainer, you know, and I said I'm gonna do a couple of um, changes and stuff. And I felt that time off that I had from him in going to Puerto Rico and training with Bonilla, you know, it helped me a lot. I did two fights with Bonilla, and and it helped me, you know. But then at the end of the day, you know, um, training in Puerto Rico and everything else was great, you know. Bonilla to this day, you know, we stay in touch. We cool. We were very friends, you know. We very cool friends and. And and he's like he he's a big figure, you know. He's a big part of my uh, my career. I mean, after after the loss that I did, you know, he actually you know made me bounce back with more or stay more hungry and stuff like that. But um, living wise, you know, I had to bring my family out there. And living wise, my family, my son and my wife was in. You know, it didn't really click living out in Puerto Rico. But but that's probably one reason I had to you know had to come back to New York. But Besides that, everything is, it was a great experience. You know, after I lost, I, I learned a lot, and and I'm coming back stronger, man. Um, after that, I won two fights. You know, I had a little promotional deal, promotional um, top issue with my promoter. You know, 
So that's an out the way. That's why I was probably hold for 10 months. But now I'm a free agent. And this card that I'm fighting September 20th is a top-ranked card. And um, let's see, man, if I open up some eyes on the top-ranked side, man, I'm probably, probably going to throw a deal at me knowing that I'm a free agent. All right, you were signed with the Bella at one point. Now, what was that experience like? And was that the first major promoter you were signed to? Yes, yes. Um, um, actually, when I first my first three fights, Top Rank was looking at my first when I was coming up. My first three fights, you know, like I, it was under Top Rank cards, you know. But I never had signed a deal with them again, you know. I never then. Um, the Bella jumped in the picture, and we did one fight under the card, and then. Then I did another fight, and they had to an offer, you know, and I took it. You know, I was young, you know, 19 years old, you know, so I took I took the first offer that was on the table, you know. The Bella, the Bella's a good promoter, you know. I don't have nothing to say, you know. They got me to where I'm at now. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it didn't work out, you know. The offers and, um, and the deals they was throwing at me, you know, it was in the direction I was trying to look at, you know, look – forward to and and stuff like that but everything is solved you know and, and now I'm focused on September 28th and my um find Jamar Wiggins and getting this ball rolling okay that fight's in Atlantic City right yes it's in Atlantic City okay yeah it looks like they got you on the car with Tapia now you know I heard that you and Tapia have been working together a little bit in training for these upcoming fights and that you sparred in the past with the likes of Sergio Martinez and Kendall Holt and uh John Dudley now, how valuable is that experience being able to spar with some world class fighters? Um, it's experience, you know. You learn, you learn from different camps because not all those fighters that you mentioned are, are same fighters. You know, they all different fighters, and they all was brought differently up. You know, but but the key is, you know, hard work. You know, you see how the time that they put in all those fighters that you mentioned, the time and the effort and the dedication that they put in, you know, to make it what it was at, at the stage, you know, that they made it to, you know, and there's, and, and, and they kept me coming up as a young, as I'm still young at this age, but coming up and seeing how they train and how, how, how they put in their time for boxing and stuff like that. It, it did a lot of, you know, it gave me a lot of experience and a lot of, um, it kept me more, it, it opened up my eyes more to stay more hungry and stay more dedicated and, and definitely focused. All right, I can dig it, man. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your amateur career. You had a real good amateur record, and I see that you're a, you're a three-time Gold Glove champion at 152. You also won the National Gold Glove Championship, and you were the MVP in that whole tournament. How valuable do you think that was to your career to win that MVP in that Gold Glove tournament? Um, You know what was it? That my first year that I won the gloves, I was, what, 16, 17? And then the second year, I know I had tougher um, competition, you know, and like I, I was like, I don't want to say I was the favorite to win the Golden Gloves again, but I was one of the favorites. So, and like, I didn't, I looked beyond it, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't just stick to um, winning the local New York City Golden Gloves, you know, I looked beyond it, like, oh, trying to win the Golden Glove Nationals and being, and getting ranked. So, what I was looking was like I was looking I wasn't looking past any opponent, but I was just training hard, you know, training hard and and, and just having one goal, winning the Golden Glove Nationals, and then advancing to the Nationals and winning it. So that was that was my main goal, you know, winning the Golden Glove Nationals that year and, and training hard and staying hungry. All right, speaking on them New York tournaments, what part of New York are you from? I'm um, from the Bronx. All right, you got a good fan base and following up there? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people know me in the Bronx, in New York City, period. You know, you mentioned my name, they, they know me. Who I am. <laughs> All right, that's good, man. And what part of the Bronx are you from? Um, I'm from um, 180th and Southern Boulevard, by, by the Bronx Zoo area. Okay. All right, now I see that you're a four-time Metro champ. Now, for the people out there that are not familiar with that, is that just a local tournament in New York City, or is that something that's in a tri-state area, or does it ex does it expand into regionals, nationals, or anything like that? That's that's a, um, a tri-state um, tournament, you know. That's a metro tournament that you know 
you advance to regional, and then regionals is like tri-state, like um, Connecticut. Once, like once you win in the city, like the um, you represent your your, your state, then you go uh, regionals. And you fight against the best in the East, like New Jersey, like Tri-State, like New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, um, New Hampshire, or Island, you know, all them states that's local. And then the best, and then the best out of that is, that's, that's Region 1. And then you go out to the USA Championships. That is, that's, um, that's, that's like a, USA Championship is like basically the Olympics in America, you know, you make it to the limp, you make it, if you if you win that tournament, that national tournament, you you definitely rank number one, and, and, and you probably like the favorite to make it. All right, now I see you got pretty far in the Junior Olympics back in two thousand four. How how far did you get in that tournament to the semis? Um, um quarterfinals. I made it to that that time. All right, now do you remember who you lost to in the in that round? Have you kept an eye on them as far as their career went and see how far their career has gone to this point? To tell the truth, nah. I know the kid that I lost, so I know he won the whole tournament. I'm not gonna buy his name. I don't really remember, but oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Re- no, nah, I don't know his name. <laughs> all right. Well, you got a pretty good professional career going for yourself now, so it all worked out for you, man. Now this fight you got coming up on this top rank card is that going to be televised? Um, it's going to be in on um, Unimars, um, the Spanish channel. Out here. I think it's channel 41 or 17. It's going to be on. Uh, that's just gonna channel on you and Univis Unimans. I think it's Telemundo, I think it is or Telefutura, I wanted them to. But it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be televised. All right, I seen that you fought before on ESPN. Now other than that, is this your only other televised fight or have you had some televised fights before? Um televised, um the the Bella they got a little um S N and Y, but it, they don't do it live, you know, like they show it. They show the replay, the replay like a day later, uh, or, or, or an hour after the show was finished, you know. But besides that, yeah, that was I fought under under the under cards on Showtime and HBO, but I was never televised though. Like I, I was coming up as a prospect. All right, all right. So you and Tapia have been working together for this upcoming fight, right? Yes. Cool, man. Now, how, how's that been working out for you guys? You know, um, I knew Glenn since we was young, you know, um, and we always helped each other since we was young, you know, um, and it's for this, for this, we, for this fight that he's having as his first main event, his first ten round fight, you know, we've been we've been working at least I think for the last past three weeks, we've been putting in work for like twice a week, three times a week, and you know, and it's, it's a good experience, you know. He just came off winning the NABA, I think it was, and on ESPN, and now he's ranked in the top ten in in WBO. So it's a good experience, you know. And he, he's a hungry young fighter like I am. We we're about the same age. I think he's probably older by like a couple of months. But you know, I'm not saying I don't want to follow his footsteps, but he's going on the right direction, you know. And um. It's just, it's just how, it's just how you brought up, how you getting bung, bung up, and how hungry you are, and how, how focused you stay, in, and and how how you want to, how, how it, it's basically you you control your own destiny, you know, when you get in the ring because you don't want to fight him, basically. Do you see yourself fighting him in the future? Um, at this point, um, in the future, probably because we all are in the same weight, you know, and we both come are uh, coming up, you know, we are uh, we only months apart from age and we in the same weight. You know, if the money's right, you know, it happens, but you know, that's in the future. Right now, you know, I'm just looking at September twenty eighth, Jemiah Wiggins, you know, I'm not looking past that right now. You know, I got a I got a task in front of me. All right, now I know you're back in NY for this fight. Now you said earlier that you had a chance to train in Puerto Rico for a while. What was that like being that the island has such a rich history on boxing and training in that heat? And, you know, they got a good, stable, young fighters. Were you able to get uh, some good sparring sessions in down there? Yes, definitely, definitely. I got good hands to spar. And the weather is great, you know. The me making weight, I don't want to say I struggle making weight, but in Puerto Rico, man, the weather is great. The food is good, you know. <laughs> yeah, the food is a big distraction. But, man, training-wise, you know, training-wise is good. You know, when I was there in the stable with Bonilla, you know, we, we run in the morning. 
in the Morro, you know, as a beautiful monument, you know, for an hour, and, and then go in the afternoon and train. And then in the same gym, they had, you know, they had a strength and conditioning coach, and they had, like, a weight room in, in a strength and conditioning. They had everything set up and what he was doing. And, and, you know, it was a good, it was a good, it was a good stable. To this point, I know it's a good place, you know, to go back and train. And, and, and get ready for a fight because they got they basically got like, they got everything to to be ready for a fight and and sparring wise it was good you know I worked with um Delorme Thomas Delorme I worked with him a lot for that fight I learned a lot with him you know he he got good hand speed and he's strong and he's a up, up, upcoming prospect too he probably about the same age yes. and um and he been on the spotlight too you know he fought at HBO. He fought HBO a couple of times on ESPN. I actually fought in his undercard when he beat um, Chop Chop Corley. And, and man, he's a, he's a good prospect, you know. He's a good. He's still a good prospect, even though he got that one blemish. But you know, he's still young and he still got a lot of years ahead of him. And I also worked with um with Mantequilla, um Jonathan Gonzalez. I think it is his name. Yeah. Yeah, he's another good. He's a good, another good fighter. And we actually on the same weight too. So um, we worked a couple of times. Um, and he's another good fighter. I've been on the spotlight too. You know, not probably in a good way, but if he was to put his mind to it, you know, he could probably make it far too. But besides that, you know, sparring and training was great out there. Everything was good. All right, now being that you're back in New York for your training, do you find it more distracting to train in New York, being at his home? There's so much more, you know, there's so much to get into in New York City, so much to do, so many places to go, so easy to get sidetracked. Was it easier being down in Puerto Rico away from all that, or is it better to be at home around the family in New York? To tell you the truth, like, family-wise and friendship-wise, out here in New York, you know, besides the family I had over there, like Bonilla, and I consider them the, the gym and his, his team as a family besides that, um... Uh, out here, I had a lot of, like, out here, if you used to come see me train out here, uh, my family and my friends, they all support me, you know? Like, as I, when I was going out there, I basically out there when I was in Puerto Rico, it was just me and the Bonilla family. And I said, besides that, the family I had out there, the, the, the support wasn't there in 100 like I got out here in New York. So when I'm out here training in New York, my friends and family... I don't want to say fans yet, you know, I got a little nice fan base, but not up there yet. It's not a big distraction, but um, they they understand when it's time for me to fight, they understand now I'm to stay away and they understand that not to get me involved in the wrongdoings and in the wrong places, you know, and they know when to fight more, um, you know, distraction is not, is not key, you know, it's just, the support is always going to be there, though. Like, I love the support that I have out here in New York. All right, now, how old were you when you first started boxing? Um, I was, like, 11, 12 years old. What were some of your influences that made you want to get into the ring? Like, who did you look up to when you were coming up? Oh, when I came up, uh, to tell you the truth, Tito Trinidad was one that I was looking up to. And then Miguel Cotto. Um, and Val Calderon was a good one, too. You know, he was a good sick boxer. You know, he was real smart, you know. Those are the those are the boxes I was looking up to when I was I I was growing up and I wasn't even into boxing, you know. When I got into boxing, you know, it was Mago Koto because at that time I think um um I, um Trinidad was already, you know, probably uh, on his way out or he I think he retired at that time, but but that was that's that's what that's who I still and I still look up to them. Now, is there anybody you want to shout out? Anything you want to add in? Do you have any side business ventures or anything you want to talk about before we get out of here? No, you know, I just want to. Um, I just want to say that I know I've been out for ten months. You know, I want every all my fans, all my friends, family that know me, to stay tuned on Unimaz September twenty eighth, and that um, on Unimaz Atlantic City Bally's to stay tuned. I know I've been out for ten months. I just want them to stay tuned. That you know they're gonna see a better Stephen Martinez this time around, and, and then I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming back stronger. All right, man. Well, uh, good luck with your fight, and thank you for the interview. Anytime you want to get on the show, hit us up or contact Rudy. And you know the site's www.futurethegame.tv, and hope to talk to you again soon, champ. Hey, thanks, you man. Thank I appreciate it. Hey, anytime, man.